right on time. Good morning. This is College Station ISD School Board President Michael Schaefer. This meeting is called to order, and I declare we have a quorum of, <coughs> if everybody can say aye. Seven. Aye. 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 Um, on March 16th, Governor Greg Abbott granted a request by Attorney General Ken Paxton to temporarily suspend a limited number of open meetings laws to the extent necessary to allow telephonic and video conferencing meetings in response to the coronavirus. For more information about the suspension, see TASB Legal Services article titled, Texas Governor Suspends Certain Provisions of Open Meetings Act Due to the Coronavirus. In accordance with these suspended rules, we certify the following. Notice this, this meeting has been postponed online, I mean, has been posted online for at least 72 hours. Although members of the board are not gathered in a central physical location, we do have a quorum in attendance at this meeting by video conference or telephone call. We are meeting by use of the Zoom software application, which allows two-way communication for members of the public. As would at any in-person meeting, members of the public who have followed the instructions on the meeting notice by submitting public comments via email two hours prior to the start of this meeting I will read the comments into record before or during the board's consideration of that item. If you would like to provide comment at a future meeting conducted by video conference or telephone call, please follow instructions on the meeting notice. All other meeting procedures will adhere to board adopted procedures to the extent practical. A video recording of this meeting is being made and will be, be available to the public at a later date. We apologize in advance for any unforeseeable difficulties and ask you for your patience as we navigate unprecedented conditions. If you have questions about these suspended laws, please contact the Attorney General's Office at 888-672-6787 or by email at toma at oag.texas.gov. Um, as we start the meeting, um, I would like to thank Mr. Martindale and the central office staff for their hard work in implementing a plan to continue the education of our students. The distance learning activities and instruction implemented this week is no small feat. College Station ISD is a large organization with close to 14,000 students, over 2,000 employees, and 19 campuses. And to be able to pull something like this off is truly incredible. The ability to successfully change the way we educate our students is a testament of the dedication and talent of our staff. I would like to thank the principals, the campus leaders, the teachers. Some are, as they're teaching their own class, are teaching their own children at home. Our staff has reached out to almost every student and guardian. I'd also like to thank Child Nutrition Services and the volunteers in our community for making sure meals are, have been available. I'd also like to thank the parents for not only working at home, but man, they're teaching their own kids while many of them are still on the clock. I would like to thank the students for continuing to learn during these such difficult times. This is truly a team effort and a reflection of the College Station ISD spirit. At this point, I'd like to move to item C1 reports. Mr. Martindale. Thank you, Mr. Schaefer, and I would like to echo your comments. Absolutely a team effort. I couldn't be more proud of the collaboration and work of, of the team uh, across the district. In the last several weeks, folks have come together and they've gotten the job done. They've done what was necessary to take care of our students. Uh, it's not perfect, and we'll reflect and adjust and continue to approve each week, but just I'll, I, I echo what you say and I pass along my appreciation of, of, of all of our faculty and staff, the appreciation to our parents for showing grace as we uh, move through these times, that, these unfamiliar times. And uh, we have taken our system and turned it completely upside down within a week and uh, we're learning and adjusting. So with that being said, I wanted to start with our food services. So I'm going to share lots of numbers with you just to give you an indication of how things are going. Uh, we, we continued our, our uh, food service uh, distribution on Monday the 16th, the first week that we closed. 
Uh, and many thanks to Ms. Goodlett, our Director of Child Nutrition, and Ms. Hester. Ms. Hester for coordinating volunteers to assist Ms. Goodlett. Uh, you know, I think I spoke to Bridget the Friday before spring break and says, hey, guess what? Uh, you're gonna have to start serving everybody on a grab and go at uh, five different locations throughout the school district. And she's, and she's okay, and, and took care of it. So, and it's my gratitude for her, her work as well as Ms. Hester. Uh, our grab and goes are Monday through Friday, as you're all aware, 11 to one o'clock. We started at Southwood Valley, South Knoll, River Bend, uh, uh, College Hills, and Oakwood. Uh, there are, you know, restrictions as to where, okay. There are restrictions as to, you know, where we can have those sites, but we started with those five sites on the 16th, continue with that through today. We did add the Lincoln Center as a site this Tuesday, March the 24th, uh, just so we can read a, a, a reach more of our community. When they come through and pick up their lunch, I don't know if folks realize this, they're also grabbing breakfast for the next morning as well. So let me give you an indication of some numbers. On Monday, March the 16th, the first day we did this, they distributed 420 meals. Yesterday, week and a half, we're almost finished with the second week, uh, that group of folks distributed uh, 1,933 meals. So you can see how it's grown over the last two weeks, and I suspect that it will continue to grow, and I'll, I'll tell you why in just a moment. But those folks have adjusted to meet the needs of that growing demand and the traffic coming through. So again, kudos to those folks. I do want to mention this, that yesterday, or excuse me, March 25th, the USDA <coughs> guidelines, they relaxed the guidelines as far as uh, there, we had to have, there had to be a child in the vehicle when parents came through. That was a federal guideline. So they relaxed those guidelines. So now the uh, Texas Department of Agriculture is able to, to waive that. So I anticipate in the next few days, they're still working through logistics of that, that that federal requirement will be removed. So if a parent was to come through, if the two kiddos aren't with them, they can still get those lunches to take home. So that was an adjustment that just came out or communication that just came out late Wednesday. We actually received it yesterday morning. There are still some logistics before it can just start happening but I would expect that, that 1,933 to uh, tick up on us simply based on, on this adjustment or flexibility with the federal uh, regulation that was provided. So that's our, our food service program. Uh, again, kudos to all of those folks, lots of volunteers. And again, Ms. Hester has served as point person in getting uh, help to Ms. Goodlett and her folks to, to manage the increasing uh, demand. So kudos to those folks. Our, our at-home uh, learning plan, which as soon as we announced our closing, folks came together, started working. You know, our, our, our CNI folks, uh, our coordinators of different content areas, our principals, our leadership teams, and our department chairs at campuses. Uh, I, I, I'm just the, the amount of work that was accomplished in one week to prop up and roll out an at-home learning uh, site this Monday, um, I, I can tell you it's just an incredible feat uh, as to what they accomplished. So let me give you just some information associated with those things as far as in the background. Uh, during uh, last week and the first part of this week, our, our teachers and principals, our campuses, uh, did reach out by phone or attempt to reach all of our students by phone. The data I received from the first of this week from our campuses were that we were able to make contact with uh, just shy of 11,000 of our 14,000 students via phone. A lot of those because maybe they didn't recognize the phone number didn't answer, so maybe they had to leave a message. But if they call back to the school, that uh, recording that they may leave goes straight to our principal's email. So that, that's a number from earlier this week. It probably tweaked up through the course of this week, but I had them give that to me uh, as of Tuesday. So 10,700 reached by phone through the course of Tuesday out of our really 13,990. Of those, of that 10,700, 
and, and the phone calls were to check on folks, but also to kind of get some information as far as uh, technology and those types of things. Instead of doing an online survey, we chose to do it by phone. Uh, we just thought that was more personable, gave us an opportunity to check on the kids and those types of things and say hello. Uh, but of those phone calls, uh, right at 91% of those folks indicated they had uh, a device, internet, they had technology resources. So that gives us an indication of where we stand from a technology standpoint in our community with our students. So we didn't reach everyone, but we, we reached a whole lot of folks. And again, over 90% of those came back with uh, indicating they had a device and, and uh, technology available to them. So as we plan and set up our at-home learning system, a two-prong approach, a high-tech approach for those that did have technology at home. That high-tech approach includes us posting our materials on our website, but also our learning management system called Schoology. We purchased that a year and a half ago. Last year was kind of a, a, a soft rollout, tightening up more expectations this year in year two. And that learning management system has proved to be invaluable for us during these times, that Schoology application. So those were our high-tech options. In addition to that, we, we did plan for a low-tech option for maybe folks that don't have technology right at the moment, or they just preferred it. And the low-tech, of course, is just a, a, a paper packet of materials for that week that are available for pickup. So we tried to, we tried to account for a wide range of um, needs and demands that folks may have. So what we have gotten through this first week, our Schoology number, numbers, uh, and, and it was showing us this through the course of the regular school year before this situation. Our secondary campuses, seven through 12, tremendous amount of activity with our students. They were more accustomed to this. You see that now in the data this week with students using it. Our elementary campuses, the parents are more active than the students, simply because students aren't as familiar with it at this point in time. And right now, as the week progresses, what we know is that we have a tremendous amount of activity in the beginning of the week, and then it kind of phased down through the course of the week this week, uh, again, as kids kind of wrap up their work. So uh, during the first week, uh, I, I'll give you an indication. We, uh, for paper, the low tech option, we distributed approximately 2,700 student packets. Uh, and I will tell you that um, a vast majority of those, right around 2,000, were at the K through four level. Now, uh, kind of what we're seeing is at the elementary level, we may have a campus where our phone calls and our parents indicated 95% of the student body had access to technology, but we're finding at the, the younger ages that the parents still uh, have a preference to have something printed in hand for their child to work on at home, as opposed to, to, to going to the device. Uh, as we progress up through uh, the grade levels, we're seeing more and more of that online activities. So really, K through four is going more toward the, the low tech option. We hit five, six, it's kind of a mix. And when we hit seven through 12, Schoology is uh, serving to be an incredible resource. So some data from Schoology that I want to share with you. This is through the uh, Monday through Wednesday. I haven't grabbed the data from Thursday yet. So Monday through Wednesday, the number of student logins we had the first three days were 18,208. Uh, and again, this doesn't account for yesterday. Uh, parent logins, over 6,000, and teacher logins, uh, over 2,300. And again, that's Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday collectively. Now, let me go back to the student logins to give you again an indication of what we're seeing, you know, K through four, Online or not, there's a preference for the paper, and then five up, you start transitioning uh, more to the online component because kids have devices and phones and that type of thing. Of the 18,208 student logins the first three days, 17,000 of those were at the 7th through 12 level. 
so as you can see, our older kids are accustomed to it. They use it. And again, as we go to the lower grade levels, then it's it's more the transition to the, the paper pencil type of activity. So though that's the that's the data we're seeing right now from um, the first week. Uh, we meet every uh, Tuesday and Wednesday with uh, campus leadership to just kind of reflect on how did it go, what adjustments we need to make. We did that this week, make adjustments for next week. A part of that conversation as well was um, let us start thinking out. So when we follow up uh, this next Tuesday with our, our campus calls by level, as part of the, the things they were supposed to collaborate on, and I know they have been, was what, what does our instruction, how do we progress our instruction right now? It's review of material. Week two will look very similar so we can fine tune at what point, week three, four, five, or six, because I asked them to look out for six weeks, not knowing how long the closing, closing may last. At what point do we attempt to introduce new concepts? And at what point do we start thinking about assigning value or feedback or holding kids accountable for, for submitting that work? So we're trying to take the data, we are taking the data we're getting, and we're trying to plan forward as to how we would stair step and progress if our closing does in fact extend uh, beyond the April 10th that we have in place right now. So that is, that is a lot of information along the lines of our at-home planning system. And, I, and, and again, I can't tell you how proud I am of the work that folks, uh, this is the week. And um, it, it, you know, obviously we're going to find things out and we'll have to make adjustments, but collectively, I'm very pleased. Uh, we have a, uh, uh, we came out of the gate very strong and uh, we have ways of collecting data to let us know how we're progressing. You know, we can also look at the, the interactions on Schoology so we can see how much the students are interacting. The total student interactions on Schoology for the course of this uh, first three days was 98,000. So, uh, of course, again, 94,000 94, were at the 7 through 12. So it's telling us the 7 through 12, we're in an excellent place with the online learning management system. We're, uh, excuse me, I've been saying 7, 12. That includes 5, 6 as well. So that 94,000 includes uh, our 5 through 12. We're, we're um, in an elementary principal's aware of this. There's just more of a preference at the elementary level to have something in hand, even though the technology access is there. It's, it's what we found out through the course of this week. So. That's learning management. I do want to touch on one or two other things uh, under this item. Of course, you're all aware that A&M uh, canceled use of their facilities through May the 1st, which has implications with us as far as graduation. Uh, I have a meeting uh, uh, with Ms. Elder and Ms. Parkerson on Monday, so we can just have some conversations associated along the lines of alternate plans for graduation. Uh, you know, there's there's not really lots of venues that are available at this point, just with all that's going on. So it's very possible that that we would be managing that through our respective football stadiums. So we're going to talk about that, get some decisions made on that, so they can communicate out to those seniors. And I feel, uh, you know, for our seniors, you know, uh, for everyone, but in particular, what a what a challenging time uh, for for those kiddos. But we're working on those types of things. The other conversations, again, that are coming are grading and, are, and GPA and all of those types of things. Those conversations are starting to evolve now. We need to, we need to not rush into decisions along those things because uh, we need to be very intentional and understand where that goes when we start making decisions about grades. We need to continue to, to get some direction from TEA and those folks. Uh, this is one with the grading that we need to uh, take our time, make the right decision, as opposed to rushing to a decision just to tell people we made a decision. So we're going to be very systematic about that because you can create some implications uh, if you don't handle that appropriately. Um, virtual meetings, and I've mentioned this, uh, cabinets ongoing. 
principal is we uh, meet virtually Tuesdays and Wednesdays mornings. Tuesday to look at data from Monday and debrief Wednesday to come back and top any loose hands for planning for the next week. Of course, all of our campuses are meeting and holding meetings uh, virtually with their folks. I mentioned the six week longitudinal plan as far as the at home planning at each level. I do a daily uh, conference call with the commissioner and also we have weekly calls with the uh, superintendents in the area as far as the region service. So uh, uh, a lot going on uh, and uh, I may have shared way too much data with you than you preferred at this point in time, but just wanted to give the group an indication of all the work and, and how we're trying to collect data to guide us in our decision making. So uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions along our superintendent's report, uh, President. I'll open up this time. Are there any questions from fellow board members? Uh, Mr. Morton, I think you did a great job um, all along for keeping us updated. Um, I know you have some long hours and um, I would like everybody to know that very seldom a day goes by that we don't get to talk to each other and um, he's always about 10 feet ahead of us. Is there any questions from any of the board members? I don't have a question, but um, you said that it may have been too much data for us, but I don't think so. I really appreciate you giving us that data um, and, and gathering that also. So I say for us, please keep that data coming because um, it helps us understand uh, why you're making the decisions that you're making. So please continue with that, thank you. We will attempt to, to summarize that each week in our communication with the board that you're accustomed to receiving. So we'll, we'll try to provide that with you on a regular basis. And, and uh, again, so many people doing so many things. I could start listing people off, but I would absolutely miss someone. Let me just tell you the collaboration amongst uh, our whole team, principals, central office, at our campuses, our departments, we, we were doing an excellent job of that before, but if there's anything that comes out of uh, all of this that we're going through now is uh, just how much stronger we've gotten with the collaboration piece. And so I think it'll be important for us when we're done with all this is what good can we glean out of what we have went through? Because I think it will, uh, uh, allow us to to continue to build on the great things that College Station ISD was already accomplishing. So um, I, I, get, I just can't say enough about the hard work of everyone. They've been working very hard. This is very difficult for everyone. Uh, so uh, I just want to thank the board for your support because you uh, trust us to do what needs to be done and provide us that that discretion. So I, I'm very appreciative of the support that all of you provide us. Thanks. I'll add a couple of comments and a couple of questions too. Certainly, I um, I echo the thanks to all everybody in the district and all the hard work you guys have been um, doing over the last really two weeks now. And um, and certainly, you, I think I like what you just said. We I trust you guys and and. And that makes me feel a whole lot better going through all this that we can trust what you guys are doing for the for the district and our students. So kind of speaking about the students and the numbers, I also agree with uh, Mrs. Nolan about um, I, I like getting the updated numbers. Do we, so we said we got a hold of 91%, is that right, of our, of our students. And um, 18,000 student touches on Schoology, do we have an, an idea of how many individual students that is? Because obviously that's more than our student body, so some kids are logging in more than once. So how many individual we, we students? Could, we could probably capture that, but Ms. Mac Adams, I don't have the individual students in front of me at this point in time. But I can work with our folks uh, and have them kind of look into the reporting system of Schoology and see how many uh, unique logins there were. Because okay. obviously it's a goal that we we capture and contact um, every one of our our students out there. So 
I guess that's the other follow up on that for that other 9% um, that that's not the, well, no, there's more than that. Sorry, there was about 3,000 we didn't get a, get a right, hold of. Right. right. What are we the doing, nine, continuing to do to reach those other 3,000? Well, and, and because I pulled this data, I have principals provide this with me, to me on Tuesday. Uh, I'll just have to get an update on the return phone calls because a lot of them were getting return, return phone calls because they left messages. Again, some parents didn't pick up because they didn't recognize the number if people were calling from their personal numbers and the numbers were blocked. So I, I would need to circle back around and ask them for some updated data on if they have reached more of those folks the last several days. That's just something I would have to inquire with them about. The 91% is the amount of folks that said they had technology that we did actually uh, make contact with. Yes. So yeah, we were we were right at 11,000, 10,008 or something out of 13. Uh, and again, I made them give me uh, this feedback, I believe Ms. Mac Adams, I made it due to them on noon uh, Tuesday. Uh, and I haven't circled back around because I, I wanted an indication very quickly as to how we were doing uh, with the beginning uh, of this week with our at-home learning plan and that type of thing because a lot, part of that conversation was too do you have a device probably checking it are you familiar with Schoology those types of things so uh, I would have to do some follow-up with them to to see where we stand on those others I, I would hope and I, I I'm sure they're circling back to those that they have not uh, heard and I, I say principals but uh, teachers are making more of those calls than, mm -hmm. than principals. So I need to be clear about that as well. Our campuses are managing those as a team effort. Thank you. Mr. Martindale, um, I have a question for you. Um, you'd mentioned that you're meeting with the commissioner or you're on a call with the commissioner once a week and then once a week with superintendents with our region. On the superintendent call specifically, is that call based? I mean, are you there? There's there collaboration from what other districts are doing and sharing. How could you could you expand the, upon that a little bit? Yes, ma'am. The calls with the commissioner from TEA, those are every day, and they typically run from three, 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, that is the commissioner delivering information, and that's superintendents and folks from throughout the, the state. So that's okay. more of a one-way communication. Okay. You can send in questions and those types of things, and then he tries to address those as they build their reaction and direction from an agency standpoint. The, uh, the once-a-week call that occurs through the service center, and that's uh, superintendents in this area, Region 6 mm -hmm. Service Center, the, uh, that, that is the, an open dialogue. Uh, so uh, the audio and those types of things, they're live, much like we're doing now. So you can ask questions and have dialogue. And it's really a lot of, hey, how are you guys handling this? Yeah. How are you handling? It, it is a share and a collaboration. The call from the commissioner on a daily basis is a one-way one way. delivery okay. of information. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And I guess it's evolving, right? Like you said, the grading and the GPA. Are there discussions with the other regions on how they're handling? Like, is that... Is that something you all are discussing um, as a team or as a you group? Know, on Wednesday, which was the 25th, there was a, I felt like we got more direction or the conversation around grading really started. It's obviously the next thing up for everyone, mm -hmm. if you, if, if you uh, get what I mean. Yes. The, the first piece was the at-home learning, and now that that's in place, the conversations and the information coming out are starting to evolve to, uh, you know, grading, uh, credits, th those types of things. So, Ms. Green, it would I would I'm hesitant to commit too much on grades and those sure. types of things because um, we have to be very very cognizant because once we make that decision, we don't go we can't go back. Uh, also. Once you make that decision, you begin to generate implications, especially at the secondary level with grade points and everything. Right. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I want to make sure 
that we have uh, heard as much as possible from TEA and gotten direction from council and a lot of those folks before we really start assigning value to, to work. And actually, I guess I'm holding out to see if maybe we can really go back to school on April yeah. the 13th. <laughs> that would be ideal, Is for, for but I, I don't know how long this is going to last. So that would be a part of our next step. Uh, uh, and, and I hesitate to get real specific with it because uh, I would be speaking prematurely. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you for giving insight into those um, collaborations and conversations. Right. I think that helps. And, and TEA has a COVID-19 website. Mm -hmm. You guys can take a look at that because after each call, they drop a lot of that. Info. There's tons of information in there. So, it, you know, you can kind of get an an idea of the direction and conversations that are going on as well. If folks felt the desire to explore that. And I guess my one last question, and it, it is how can we as a board help continue to support you and your team? Um, you got, you know, uh, Mr. Schaefer and I speak on a regular basis, if not daily. Uh, and oftentimes, if there are, are single questions from board members, they reach out to me. The, the most valuable thing, and of course, if we're not thinking of something that you hear in the community, maybe there's a pressing item mm -hmm. that we're not picking up on. Of course, I would want to hear that uh, uh, from the board so that I'm aware of it. But it, really, Ms. Green, just the support and letting us get after business uh yeah. that that is uh uh that is that is this the is is what we need and that's what okay. all of you have provided is the support and the trust and uh we do not take that lightly i assure you i understand thank you so much thank you for all you're doing thank you thank all of you any other Mr. questions Mark or, Mills. Oh, okay. Mr. Ben? Oh, yes, I, I just kind of a specific question, but, um, and I know y'all you know, have got a lot of your plate with um, everything that's that, that's going on and, and food services, which have done an amazing job on and, and the traditional education. Uh, one of the questions that, that I've been asked about several times is the um, additional services that the district provides specifically like to special education students. Um, have y'all gotten any guidance yet from the state or the federal government as to uh, how those additional services for for SPED students need to be handled or or, or not at this point? Uh, yeah, Ms. Fuentes and her department, I, I think, are reaching out and visiting with those folks specifically to provide those supports of students that have services beyond general ed. Uh, there's beginning to be some direction from the state on this. There's not a tremendous amount of flexibility uh, from the federal standpoint, but I know Ms. Fuentes and her group, uh, we've been having uh, ARDS and those types of things have been occurring at the campus level virtually. So I know they're working to try to continue to provide those specific services. So Mr. Ben, that, that is occurring and I would encourage folks if they receive those services, they haven't had some communication uh, uh, from a, uh, a, 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 a respective campus uh, teacher or from central office, to send an email so folks can follow up on that. But I know they're working very hard uh, because that is a, you know, that's a, that's a specialized instruction, individual instruction. And so it, um, uh, it, that offers another opportunity for us during these times. So I'd encourage folks to reach out to either their teacher contact or to uh, Ms. Fuentes over here via email. Uh, but I know they're working at putting plans together for those kids individually. Good deal. Thank, thank you. Thank you. I want to go ahead and ask one other kind of specific question. And it is about the, the food service. And obviously, so pleased that we're able to offer food, you know, to the 2,000 kids out there. But with the latest news out of Houston that they had to stop offering food because one of the, um, I guess one of the people handing out the foods had to be quarantined. Are, what are we doing to ensure that 
that's not going to happen to us, especially since we're at six different locations now. Uh, a, a lot of gloves and sanitizer. Um, and that there's a, 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 a box of the gloves out front as they pass out lunches, as well as the sanitizer. I can tell you I, last Friday uh, during the monsoon that we were experiencing, I was uh, helping some of the folks uh, pass out lunches. And so uh, they are constantly aware of that and uh, you know, changing the, the, the plastic, the, the, the gloves on a regular basis as well as using the sanitizer. So uh, in limiting the, the person that's actually passing out the lunches you know, to the vehicles to one or two people as opposed to you know six or seven different people uh, handing out lunches to the vehicle. So they're very aware of that, uh, Mrs. McAdams, and, and those, those are the efforts they're making, and I can speak to that personally because I was a part of that last week. Oh, I, I appreciate that very much. And, and I wasn't sure I was gonna share this, but I think I will go ahead and, and share it. A few of you know that um, I personally know one of the people in our community that tested positive last week, and it's a parent you know, at our school it's somebody who has um, a, a kid at AMCMS and a, and a student at Oakwood. And so it really became very real for me, you know, um, the end of last week. And, and I still also along those lines, I mean, I, it really helped me reiterate the fact that we're doing the right thing, keeping our, our students safe right now. I, I, and I, Appreciate all the work that you guys are continuing to, to do um, to maintain that safety for our community. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schaefer. That is, uh, I'll be happy to answer any other questions. Uh, other, otherwise, I, that's what I have to share with the group. Any other questions? Okay, we'll move to item D. Hearing of citizens, uh, Ms. Horn, do we have any emails? I can answer for Ms. Horn, Ms. Shepard. We did, we did not receive any uh, comments via email. Okay. We will move to item E1, personnel. Item E1 is consideration, discussion, and possible action related to the resolution of the board regarding wage payments during emergency school closure due to the COVID-19 emergency. Mr. Martin Dill. Thank you, Mr. Schaefer. As our, our local policy, DEA, allows us to continue to pay employees during a time of emergency closure, a resolution just kind of finalizes that act for us, and it also, uh, the board uh, empowers me to make specific uh, decisions regarding that compensation during the time of closure. We've done this in the past for different days of missed work and those types of things but never for a period uh, of, of, of such a lengthy time. So the resolution really just enacts current policy to pay those folks during the closure and allows me to make specific administrative decisions that come along with that. So uh, we paid all our folks on the 25th and compensation on the 25th was for the time period through March the 16th. So there was only a day where we didn't actually work during this time. Uh, April the 10th will be the time where, uh, you know, we're compensating for having been closed. So this resolution uh, just officially enables me to continue to make decisions and uh, pay folks accordingly. Thank you, Mr. Martindale. Is there any discussion regarding this item? And um, this is just for clarification. This is for salary and hourly, correct? Uh, it, yes, it would include both. Okay. And there are many more strings to that, Ms. Nolan, but uh, yes, it, it, it does pay uh, our exempt and non exempt. Yes. And, and I will tell you this uh, I think during these times, it's extremely important to take care of our, our, our folks, uh, just all the uncertainty. And uh, so as we've went through this and looked at the specifics of this, because we have over 2,000 different employees, uh, we've 
really worked to um, uh, uh, take take care of of, of folks that regular uh, you know regularly scheduled to be a part of our district. So if there aren't any other questions, Mr. Schaefer, we would ask for approval of the resolution. Do I hear a motion? Yeah, I, I move that we approve the resolution uh, regarding wage payments during the emergency school closure due to the COVID-19 emergency. Mr. Uh, Nugent has made a motion. Do I hear a second? I second. Ms. Nolan has seconded the motion. We will do a roll call, roll call vote. When I call your name, please say yes or no in response. A yes vote means you are in support of the motion on the table. Place one, Mike Nugent. Yes. How do you vote? Yes. Place two, Amanda Green. How do you vote? Yes. Place three, Joshua Ben. How do you vote? Yes. Place four, Jeff Warren. How do you vote? Yes. Place five, Kimberly Adams. How do you vote? Is that not loud enough? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Place six is myself, and I vote yes. Place seven, Geraldine Nolan. How do you vote? Yes. The motion passes with seven members voting yes and zero voting no. We will move to item F1, business. Item F1 is consideration, discussion, and possible action related to a resolution of the board regarding procurement procedures and purchasing during emergency school closure due to the COVID-19 emergency. Mr. Martin Dill. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Schaefer. This resolution that delegates, uh, the board delegates me to make purchases that exceed 50,000. Uh, in policy, any purchase beyond uh, 50,000 would require board approval. The resolution uh, delegates that to me just simply during this time of closing or any emergency purchases that uh, would be necessary to maintain the operations uh, of the school district. I, I will tell you now we're, this would just may allow us to move quickly if there were a particular issue. I don't have a purchase right now I have in mind or that is pending uh, that would require you know, my action or our action. This just makes us a little uh, uh, lighter on our feet in case we did encounter that. This obviously would only be effective through the duration of the closure. And I would make this commitment to the board simply because I won't, you know, uh, if, if I, I see that need and would act on it, uh, I would absolutely communicate it to the board so you are aware of it. Right now, there isn't a particular need. We're just doing this in case something or unforeseen occurs that, that we're covered and we can move quickly uh, to take care of things. I'll ask if, there, if there's any public comments related to this item. Um, Mr. Martin, if you know if there is any. There, we can there were no public there were no public comments uh, submitted for, for any uh, items uh, this morning, Mr. Schaefer. Okay. Is there any discussion regarding these items from board members? Uh, Mr. Schaefer, the only thing I'd mention is just for the, the, the you know, the, we know this, but the, the public that may be watching, um, you know, the district does have a, a reserve and uh, so despite the fact that this could be for any unbudgeted items, uh, the funds would actually be there to, to use. Uh, and so uh, just to remind everybody of that fact. Uh, and I'll, I'll touch in, Mr. Ben makes an excellent point. Uh, I'm not looking to go off and spend a bunch of money. Again, this is just to, to keep us uh, light on our feet. Uh, as you all are well aware, Having served as CFO as well, no more, no one is more tuned in to, to uh, or more financially conservative than me. So, if there were a need, then we would uh, make sure we accounted for that in the, the budget uh, accordingly. So, fi the, you know, uh, school finance system is still running, uh, and they provided some clarification on how they're going to calculate that through the course of the year. So, we're, we're fine uh, from that standpoint. 
Mr. Martindale, we are enjoying the fact that you're wearing two hats for the salary of one, just for the record. Um, I, I, I won't comment on that one, Mr. Schaefer. Thank you. <laughs> I will. I am not happy. <laughs> It's quite all right. Uh, Mr. Schaefer, I'll be happy to answer other questions. Uh, otherwise, uh, we would ask for approval for the resolution as presented. If there's no further discussion, I would um, entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve um, the resolution regarding procurement procedures and purchasing during emergency school closure due to the COVID-19 emergency. Ms. Green has made a motion. Do I hear a second? I'll I second. That. Go ahead, Jeff. Mr. Hort second. has seconded the motion. We will do a roll call vote. When I call your name, please say yes or no in response. A yes vote means you are in support of the motion on the table. Place one, Mike Nugent, how do you vote? Yes. Place two, Amanda Green, how do you vote? Yes. Place three, Joshua Ben, how do you vote? Yes. Place four, Jeff Warren, how do you vote? Yes. Place five, Kimberly McAdams, how do you vote? Yes. Place six is myself and I vote yes. Place seven, Gerald Nolan, how do you vote? Yes. The motion, the motion passes seven members saying yes and zero stating no. Um, we'll move to item N, adjournment. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. Um, success, each life, each day, each hour. This concludes our business and we're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all.